Part five, well, we think it's part five of superpower relations. Um, and tell me and Nicole, think it's part five, but if it's not and it's part four, you'll just be confused and, and jumbled up. But never mind. Anyway, detente is what I'm looking at now. Because last time I talked about the Cuban Missile Crisis in Berlin. Now I want to talk about how things get better. 60s, 70s, right? That the world would come close to war, doesn't happen, and they think, how can we get things better? So, first up. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, they agreed to have the superpowers, Washington, US President, White House, Moscow, uh, the Kremlin, USSR leader, they agreed to have a hotline directly contactable um, between the two superpowers, right? So the leader can get to the leader just like that. And in, in, in this way, they'd be able to negotiate and be, and de be diplomatic and hopefully they won't avoid any future crises. Now, this makes things better. Detente is really a kind of chill out, a relaxation and improvement in relationships. And it's really, really important um, that at this time, it followed on from a peaceful coexistence where Christian had said, look, we can have competitions and sports and we can negotiate and work in space together and we can visit each other's countries. It's really a continuation of this. Um, so the hotline kicks it off. It's followed by, very quickly, by a nuclear test ban treaty. When, remember, the West, the Americans and the, and, and the, um, and the Russians, they agree not to test nuclear weapons above ground. Do it underground, but don't tell anyone. So they only do it... Um, everyone feels better and everyone feels happier, except someone's got to know about fun. Um, the next up in the 60s, they agreed to a nuclear non-proliferation treaty, whereby all countries that have got nuclear weapons say, we'll just keep them to ourselves. We're not going to let these nuclear weapons spread. We're not going to let loony countries like Iran and Pakistan and uh, Israel and, and mad people's countries like that, you know, Ooh, I hope I'm not terrified now. Um, they said, look, we'll not let those nuclear missiles spread because that would be dangerous. So, they did spread, but never mind, they tried to stop it. Um, but you couldn't really stop all these nuclear missiles getting, getting out and about into the real world, you know. Um, so, non proliferation treaty, it was a nice idea, but in practice, did it really work? Don't know. SALT so 1, President Richard Nixon of America and President Brezhnev, the new Russian leader, they agreed to reduce missiles. It's the first treaty whereby the two countries said, let's get rid of some nuclear missiles. They're not very good nuclear missiles, the short range ones, the little ones, the kind of baby missiles. Um, they'd still be pretty nasty if one hit you, but they actually do get rid of some. And everyone thinks, oh god, this is really going well, the superpowers are getting on together. But of course, they still have their massive missiles, their intercontinental ballistic missiles, their ICBMs, um, and they still have these fantastic launching facilities. But at least, SOT 1, they're on the right track. So that's another feature of Detente. They also talk regularly about just working things out, and these are called the Mutual Balanced Arms Reduction Talks. It's dead informal. The countries kind of sit down and they say, mm, got any weapons you want to get rid of? Kind of. Have you? Mm, maybe. Let's have a chat about it. And they try to agree some mutually balanced arms reduction deals. Nothing really happens, but at least they're talking. It's good to talk, good to chat. Um, even in the 70s, the astronauts meet up in space and they have like a big ceremonial handshake and they kind of helmets, that sounds rude, um, but they do it anyway. And finally in 1973, like that bit, um, that they agree in Helsinki to have a human rights agreement that Russia, which has always been bad on human rights and free speech and religious choice and racial equality and a few gay rights and all the trendy stuff, right, Russia says, yeah, we'll play along, we'll do a little bit of that. And again, they talk, it looks like things are getting better and it looks like the people are getting happier in both countries and it doesn't look like they're going to have a war. So they talk between 63 and 78 is really, really good. Unfortunately, in 78, 79, it all goes a little bit pear-shaped. Just as they're getting ready for SALT 2, the next stage of talks to get rid of some ICBMs, the big old missiles, before they're getting rid of those though, unfortunately stuff starts to go bad. In Iran, right, the loony towel heads, what they do then, right, they take a lot of American prisoners in their embassy, the hostage crisis, and the Americans are rubbish at dealing at it, and they get all worried. In Angola, in Africa, 
those Cubans and Russians end up going down to help some army fight South Africa. It's all a bit of a messy war, a bit of a silly one, but they all get the knickers in the twist. And finally, in Europe, they bring out some brand new, spanking, shiny nuclear weapons pointed at Western Europe, and America sends them over to, to Britain, and they put them pointed at Eastern Europe, and here we go, Second Cold War is about to start. It really does start with the invasion by the Russians of Afghanistan, and that will feature in our final bit. Stay with us, come back if you can. <laughs>